welcome to the sixth Sunday after Pentecost as we join together wherever we are to worship and praise God. This morning was an interesting morning as we came down and got things set up in the living room and connected the TV to the laptop and it decided it didn't want to work. So for about a half an hour, Jeff and I were scrambling to get things to work where it finally did. The other thing that was really interesting, and maybe you had this this morning as well, is I opened up Facebook and there was nothing there. It wouldn't let me on. So there's some issues, but I hope and pray that today as we worship and praise God, we will all be together in God's arms. So let us gather together on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Let us be the church together. join me in our call to worship this day. We are all children of God, as, as brilliant as, as a shining star, star, as wondrous as an ocean wave, as, as special as, as a fragrant rose, as unique as each falling leaf. We, we are all God's children, children, united in praise, humbled in awe, and, and prompted to, to praise, praise God. God. Will you join in singing wonderful words of life?
passage for today is from Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth, and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end.
about you, but that brought chills and tears to my eyes. Thank you, Ted. So children and those of you else who are listening, there's a story today about a sower, that's a farmer, who went out to th sow some seeds. Now, farmers usually go and they cultivate the ground and they take their big tractors and they make it all set. But the story goes today from Jesus that the sower took his seeds and he spread them all around, just taking them and spreading them. And the first seeds fell along the path, the path which was shallow. And the seeds couldn't very deeply go in, and so the birds came along the path. The second seeds fell upon the rocky ground. And we know what happens with rocks. Is this, the ground isn't very deep and the rocks are sharp. And so they didn't grow the seeds very well. And then there was the thorny soil with the weeds all around and the thorns and the seeds got choked. And then there is the good soil, the soil that the seeds grew from. But you know, the thing about this story is that the seeds are planted. It doesn't matter where they're planted. The seeds are continually planted. So our seeds are planted. God's seeds are planted. God's love and compassion God's grace, God is planted within us. And the seeds begin to grow and show love and compassion and hope and grace. We all can plant seeds. Let's continue to plant those seeds wherever we go, from our smallest <coughs> child to our oldest adult. Let's plant the seeds and help God to help them grow. Seeds, soil. Think about that. Every time you look outside and you see the beauty. Every time you look at another human being and you see God's beauty. The seeds have been planted. Thanks be to God that they have been. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the seeds that you have planted in our hearts, in ourselves, and in others. Amen. <laughs>
Using the boat as a pulpit, he addressed his congregation telling stories. What do you make of this? A farmer planted seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and the birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel. It sprouted quickly, but it didn't put down roots. So that when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening? Really listening? Study this story of the farmer planting seed. When anyone hears news of the kingdom and doesn't take it in, it just remains on the surface. And so the evil one comes along and plucks it right out of that person's heart. This is the seed the farmer scatters on the road. The seed cast in the gravel and the rocks. This is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm. But there is no soil of character. And so when the emotions wear off and some difficulties arise, there is nothing to show for it. The seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news. But weeds of worry and illustration, illusions but weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard and nothing comes of it. The seed cast on the good earth is the person who hears and takes in the news and then produces a harvest beyond their wildest dreams. Thanks be to God that we have these words of scripture to guide us and to give us seeds of hope and grace. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A sower story for today. Jesus was sitting on the beach and he noticed the crowds and so he got up and he went into his boat. He pushed it out to sea and he looked out over the crowds on the beach because this was before social distancing and he told them a story, a parable. A sower went out to sow you know, a farmer, threw the seeds all over the ground, didn't spend time cultivating and adding special nutrients to the ground, just threw the seeds all over the ground. The sower waited and watched for the seeds to bear fruit. The seeds that fell on the path, on the road, the birds ate them. The seeds that fell on the rocky, gravelly ground sprang up quickly, but didn't have a root system, and so the hot sun scorched them. The seeds that fell among the thorns, among the weeds, the thorns grew and choked them out. And the seeds that fell on the good soil, these seeds grew and bare fruit. That's essentially our story. So what does it mean for us? Well, let's do some history, some looking at around where this is from. Jesus doesn't just tell this story, this parable. He lives it. And so does the community of which Matthew, this gospel, is written to. They're first century Palestinians. And they're having a hard time, and it's a really hard place to be a Christian. Poverty, persecution, illness, lots and lots of people and numbers migrating out of the region because it was such a difficult place to live. This is to whom the story is being told. 
And even within the church itself, there are dissenters and false prophets. And so Jesus tells this parable and reminds his followers, and Matthew reminds the community of which we are listening in on. That rejection of Jesus' message does not mean the message is wrong or their efforts are folly. It's simply a fact of life, whether in farming or in faith. Okay, so the job of the sower was to sow. Who is this sower? God, the church, you, the pastor? Who is the sower? Well, let's look at the people. People, like soil, are very different. How is it that we respond to the word of God, to the seeds that have been sown in us, and the other various acts of God in our lives? How do we live with these seeds that have been sown? Do we tolerate the trials and tri tribulations of the world and and they tend to overwhelm the tender seed growing within us. Or do we pull back when people harass us because we are believers, standing up for justice, lovers of God? Or do we agree that because things are not working out the way we think they ought, that God doesn't care for us, that God is powerless and weak and not to be followed? Or do we allow the cares of this world, our ambitions, our desires for success and happiness to choke out the message that God sends us through various events of our daily lives and through various people that we encounter? How do we, me, you, all of us, how do we respond to the word of God? It's key in how fruitful the gospel is going to be in our lives. Just like those seeds on the ground. They didn't have a choice how they respond. But we have a choice on how the seeds respond in us. We have control over how we respond to the seeds, to the gospel message. And we can, if we need to, change the kind of soil that we are. We are not passive receivers of the gospel, the good news. At, at least we don't have to be. We have power over how to respond to this gospel, to this good news, to Jesus. God has given us tremendous freedom. He either say yes to God or no to God. And in saying either yes or no, God also gives us the freedom and the power to have our hearts that are fruitful for God, or hearts in which the word is quick, quickly snatched away and withers and dies. There are many seeds that God casts into our lives. All of them are meant to land in the good soil and to produce abundant fruit. But as any farmer knows, some seeds are going to fall in places where it's simply not going to thrive. Knowing this does not prevent the farmer from sowing the seeds. Nor does it prevent the sower from praying for it and expecting the seeds to grow into a good crop. And think about this. When God deals with us, God deals with us even more generously than does the best farmer with their seeds. God acknowledges that the seed will land on hard paths and on rocking ground, 
and in thickets of our lives in the hope that in those places it will find a place to mature and to bear fruit. In the hope that those things which impede growth will be removed. In the hope that the soil might just be a little deeper than it first appears in those rocky places. This week, we celebrated my dad's life at our graveside service. Now, it was odd because it was just the 11 of us, my two sisters and their families and my family. But we gathered to celebrate dad's life. And what I noticed was the seeds that had been planted in him, the seeds that he planted in others shone through. Because it became very apparent to me that the good soil is where those seeds were planted. Well, I'm not saying that his life was all easy. But I'm saying the seeds took root. The amount of people that have written to me on Facebook or in notes or in cards that wrote about him. The messages and words about how he helped them to grow the seeds that he planted in their lives. Through all lives, but especially in those times that were most difficult, in the thorny and the rocky places, Dad was there planting seeds, listening, being, and sowing seeds of compassion and love. It is truly the generosity of God that gives abund abundantly. The generosity of God that magnifies our best efforts into this fruitful, extravagant, and altogether gracious yield. Thomas Long, a noted theologian, writes this. Therefore, the church is called to waste itself to throw grace around, seeds of grace around, like there is no tomorrow. Precisely because there is a tomorrow. And it belongs to God. So I invite you to sow the seeds, to spread those seeds extravagantly, to believe in God's abundance, to be filled with God's promise, to proclaim and live this promise even in the face of rejection and the reality of the world in which we live. Trust God. Trust God's abundant generosity. Because you see, when we sow the seeds, we don't know what's going to grow. God is working in those seeds. So sow the seeds abundantly. Sow the seeds generously. And grow in God's love. Anyone with ears, listen. Let us be at a time of prayer. Let us gather ourselves. Share the names, remembering that the names that you do share are public. So only first names. And pray. Pray together.
You join me, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. offering our gifts, our treasure. We are grateful for all that you have shared and continue to share. The ministry of the church is ongoing and we need your treasure. And we are so thankful for what you have given. But open yourselves up, open your hearts up, open your hands up and give generously to God in the many ways that you can, online or by sending a check in. Thank you for what you have sent in. And continue to send your treasure to be the church in this time and place. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit comforter. One God triune. Let us join in singing as Corey plays, In the Bulb There is a Flower. out into the world, remember God's table. It is a table for all of us of love, where seeds are sown. So share this meal of bread and juice, of hope and love, of grace and mercy, of family, of love. This meal, seeds are sown. Share it together. Take and eat, drink. It is God's meal. And as we do, as we go out into this world, let us share the light. Sow the seeds. Sow the seeds. Share the light. 
and know that God is holding us. So go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit that is now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.